This is the rest of section 3.5, the implicit differentiation section, especially the inverse trig derivatives that I'll be sharing with you right now. All right, so we're supposed to be here. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it off Wednesday the 10th, finish section 3.5. <clears throat> I'm making one adjustment to the homework, skip problem 23. Okay, so for assignment 3.5, skip 23, I'm gonna go ahead and mark it off that I'll be doing all the rest of the problems that I was planning to do. <clears throat> all right, the inverse trig derivatives, just the inverse sign, cosine and tangent. There are derivatives for inverse secant, cosecant, cotangent. We're not responsible for them, so I'm not gonna hold you to those. <clears throat> okay, here's the derivation. Y is inverse sine of X. Write it without the inverse, or you can take the sine of both sides, sine of Y equals X. That's how you would rewrite it without the negative one, without the inverse function. Sine of Y is X over one. Then I differentiate implicitly on both sides, cosine y dy dx equals one. dy dx is one divided by cosine y. Okay, but let's see what's cosine of y. So I draw myself a triangle. Sine is, you might recall, opposite over hypotenuse. So I made myself a triangle with the angle being y. Opposite is x, hypotenuse is one. A Little bit of a squared plus b squared equals c squared gives you this side is radical one minus x squared. So dy dx is one over cosine of y. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's one over radical one minus x squared divided by one. But if you divide by one, just leave it as one over radical one minus x squared, okay? In summary, derivative inverse sine of x is one over radical one minus x squared. Okay, you are not responsible for this derivation. I am responsible for the derivation. You're only responsible for this. <clears throat> And I'll show you the derivation for inverse cosine and inverse tangent. Again, they work similarly. So y equals inverse cosine of x. Write it without the inverse. Cosine of y is x over 1. Differentiate implicitly. Negative sine of y dy dx equals 1. Remember, if there's a y involved, you have to tack on a dy dx. Divide both sides by negative sine of y. dy dx is negative 1 over sine of y. Draw my triangle. Okay. So this time cosine of y, x over one, <clears throat> x over one. Here's why cosine is adjacent x over hypotenuse one. That makes the opposite side radical one minus x squared. That's what that is. <clears throat> so dy dx is negative one over sine of y. Sine is radical one minus x squared opposite over hypotenuse. Again, if you divide by one, just drop it. Negative one over radical one minus x squared. Bottom line. Derivative inverse cosine is negative one over radical one minus x squared, which is exactly the same as the derivative for inverse sine, except that there's a negative. Okay, again, you're not responsible for the derivation. <clears throat> and inverse tangent, y equals inverse tangent of x, write it without the negative one. Tangent of y is x over one. Differentiate implicitly, derivative of tan y is secant squared y dy dx, because there's a y involved, and a derivative of x is one. <clears throat> Divide both sides by secant squared y. dy dx is one over secant squared y. If you divide by secant squared, it's like multiplying by cosine squared, the reciprocal. Okay, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So here's y, tan y opposite, x adjacent one. A little bit of Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse comes out to be radical one plus x squared. So dy dx is cosine squared y. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's one over radical one plus x squared squared, and that comes out to be one over one plus x squared. <clears throat> Bottom line, derivative inverse tangent is one over one plus x squared, okay? All right, so what do you need to know? If you follow none of what I did over here or here or here, that's okay. What you do need to do is put these on your next formula sheet, page 214. The derivative of the inverse trig function, just three is three. Forget about these. They're true, there's nothing wrong with it, <clears throat> but I'm not holding responsible for it. You won't really need them. So derivative of inverse sine, cosine and tangent. Again, you should be happy that we're not meeting in person because I make you memorize it. There are kind of tricks to make you memorize it. I mean, they all have a one on top, 
they have a one and an x squared in the bottom. Okay, these two have a square root. This one doesn't, and it's a plus. Okay, so anyway, derivative inverse sine, one over radical one minus x squared. Derivative inverse cosine is the same thing, except there's a negative. And the derivative inverse tangent is one over one plus x squared, no square root, and it's a plus. Okay, so you can see it's not that bad to memorize it, just those three, and never mind about these. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I'll try to show you one of each. Okay, 50, y equals inverse tangent of x squared. So the derivative is by the chain rule, one over one plus this thing squared, x squared squared, and then by the chain rule, it's times the derivative of the inside, which is two x. So a little bit of touch up, two x over one plus x to the fourth power. Okay, 52. In case you're wondering why I gave such a strange assignment, I had to tiptoe around the uh, arc secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So looking back at the assignment, um, why did it look so weird? I had to make sure I picked only the ones that had inverse sine, cosine, and tangent, not secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Okay, and I'm gonna show you the even ones anyway that are here. <laughs> so one of each type, hopefully. All right, uh, 52, arc cosine of radical x. Arc cosine means the same thing as inverse cosine, radical x. All right, so the derivative is negative one over radical one plus this thing squared, radical x squared. And then by the chain root times the derivative of radical x. Remember radical x is like x to the one half. So one half x to the negative one half. Okay, this thing squared is just gonna be x. So I have negative one over radical one minus x. There's a two in the bottom and a square root of x in the bottom. Okay, and you can combine these. So negative one over two, that times that is radical x minus x squared. Okay, and 57, y is equal to x inverse sine of x plus radical one minus x squared. Okay, so this is a product rule and that's a chain rule. Okay, so you write it like this. So x inverse sine of x plus radical one minus x squared. Y prime is first times derivative of the second x times derivative inverse sine is one over radical one minus x squared plus second function inverse sine of x times derivative of the first derivative of x is one. Okay, plus the derivative of this is one half one minus x squared to the negative a half. Then by the chain root times the derivative in, inside which is negative two x. Okay, so that two cancels that two. So I have x over radical one minus x squared plus inverse sine of x. This turns out to be plus x over radical one minus x squared. Very conveniently, these cancel out. So my answer is just inverse sine of x. Okay, notice that these are explicit differentiation, right? We're not doing inverse, uh, sorry, we're not doing implicit differentiation right now. We needed implicit differentiation to come up with the formulas, but um, not in terms of you know, just working these ones out right here. Okay, all right, so those are those. I'm gonna go back and do some other ones for you from this section. So let's see, 3.5 number nine, <clears throat> x squared over x plus y equals y squared plus one. Now you could do a quotient rule, but I think it's easier to avoid it, just multiply both sides by x plus y. Okay, before we start. So x squared equals x plus y times y squared plus one. Okay, and I foil this out. X squared is x y squared, plus x plus y cubed plus y. All right, then I differentiate implicitly. So derivative of this is two x. This looks like it's gonna be a product rule. So first times derivative of the second, f g prime. So x times two y dy dx plus g f prime. Second function is y squared times the derivative of the first, which is one, derivative of x is one, don't need anything else, plus the derivative of x is one, derivative of y cubed, three y squared dy dx. You might recall we did this a while back, f of x cubed, it, the derivative is three f of x squared times f prime of x, same kind of thing. And plus the derivative of y, which is dy dx. Okay, <clears throat> so all the dy dx's on one side, everything that does not have a dy dx on the other side. So I leave that one, 
that one and that one, subtract out the stuff that doesn't have a dy dx, namely a y squared and a one. So I have two x minus y squared minus one equals that one, that one, and that one, factor out the dy dx, and I have two xy plus three y squared plus one. And just divide both sides by this thing. So dy dx is two x minus y squared minus one, all over two xy plus three y squared plus one. Okay, uh, number seven, look like this. Okay, so differentiate both sides. Derivative x to the fourth is four x cubed. This is a product group. <clears throat> First times derivative of second, x squared times two y, and since there's a y, dy dx, plus second function, y squared times derivative of the first, derivative of x squared is 2x, plus derivative of y cubed, we just did that, 3y squared dy dx, equals the derivative of the right-hand side, derivative of five is zero. Okay, so dy dx stays, everything that does not have a dy dx, namely this one and this one, come over. When I bring them over, they'll become negatives. So negative four x cubed minus two xy squared. These two have a dy dx, factor that out. And I get two x squared y plus three y squared. Divide both sides by this. So dy dx is negative four x cubed minus two x y squared over two x squared y plus three y squared. Okay, uh, number three, radical x plus radical y equals one. Write it as x to the one half plus y to the one half equals one. Okay, differentiate both sides. Derivative of this is one half x to the negative one half. Derivative of this is one half y to negative one half times dy dx because there's y involved. And the derivative of one is zero. To make it look nicer, multiply both sides by two to get rid of the fraction. So x to the negative one half plus y to the negative a half dy dx equals zero. Move this one over becomes a negative. Y to the negative a half dy dx equals negative x to the negative a half. Divide both sides by y to the negative a half. So I have dy dx is negative x to the negative a half over y to the negative a half. Clean it up. Both of these have negative exponents, which means this can go up and this can come down. So negative y to the half over x to the half. Raising something to the one half means square root. So best final answer is negative radical y over x. Okay, then 21, f of x plus x squared, f of x cubed equals 10. To say f of one equals two, find f prime of one. <clears throat> okay, so first I differentiate implicitly. Derivative of this is f prime of x. This is a product rule. First times derivative of the second. So x squared times three f of x squared, then by the chain rule times the derivative of the inside, f prime of x, plus the second function, f of x cubed, times the derivative of the first, derivative of x squared is two x, equals the derivative of 10, which is zero. <clears throat> okay, now I plug in one everywhere. So put a one there, 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 and there. So f prime of one plus one squared times three times f of one squared, f prime of one plus f of one cubed times two times one equals zero. Okay, so one squared is one times three. f of one was given to be two, so that's two squared f prime of one, f of one was two, so two cubed times two equals zero. <clears throat> so I have one times three times four is 12, f prime of one plus 12, f prime of one plus two cubed is eight times two is 16 equals zero. f prime of one plus 12, f prime of one is 13, f prime of one plus 16 equals zero. Subtract 16, divide 13. So f prime of one is negative 16 over 13. Okay. And then uh, 17, <clears throat> this last one. Inverse tangent of x squared plus y equals x plus xy squared. Okay, so what's the derivative of this? So inverse tangent of x prime is one over one plus x squared. <clears throat> so I go one over one plus whatever's behind my finger squared, one over one plus x squared y squared, then by the chain root times the derivative of the inside, which is a product. So first x squared times the derivative of the second, derivative of y is one 
dy dx plus the second y times the derivative of the first, which is 2x, equals the derivative of the right side, derivative of x is 1, derivative of xy squared, it's a product. <laughs> so x times 2y dy dx plus y squared second function times the derivative of the first, which is 1. <laughs> OK, slide all of this on top. So I have x squared over 1 plus x to the fourth y squared dy dx plus, then I distribute this, 2xy over 1 plus x to the fourth y squared. The reason why I split it up is because I want all the stuff with the dy dx together eventually. And I leave this alone. OK, so all the dy dx's are on the left. So I bring this one over. And I bring this one on this side. And it looks like I left off the one. Sorry, so one. OK, so that goes over. So dy dx is this one and this one. When this comes over, it's a minus. So x squared over 1 plus x to the fourth y squared minus 2xy dy dx equals 1 plus y squared. And then this mess came over as a negative. So negative 2xy over 1 plus x to the fourth y squared. OK, so now you just divide both sides by this, which is extremely messy. And yeah, sorry, I left off the 1 here also. So I have 1 plus y squared minus 2xy over 1 plus x to the fourth y squared divided by all of this, x squared over 1 plus x to the fourth y squared minus 2xy. OK, that's a big mess. You can make it look a little nicer if I multiply top and bottom by the common denominator, which is 1 plus x to the fourth y squared, 1 plus x to the fourth y squared, OK? But you know, if you want to just leave it like that, you know, that would be fine by me. OK, or you can go ahead and do this. Well, it's all messed up now because of this. So tell you what, I'm not even going to trust this because I fouled that up. Maybe I should just leave well enough alone and say, you can leave it like that. Or if you want to distribute and multiply this out, it does clean this up, but it'll give you a much messier expression over there. OK, so this was the rest of 3.5. And let me just raise it up again for focusing purposes, if you want to see it a little bit better. OK, so that was just 17. I'm kind of going backwards here. So 3.5, catch this on the video. And there's three again, going reverse order here. OK, and what else did I do today? So started from th this, although you're not responsible for this. I was responsible for this, but in case you want to see where do these derivatives come from, there was that. And then problem 50, 52, and 57. OK, so that pretty much does it. All right, so that is the remainder of section 3.5 on implicit differentiation.